Okay. I guess that's, oh, yes. Hi. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Yo Soy Neighborhoods Fresno. Today's May 1st, May Flowers, Mother's Day, and we got an extension, <laughs> the stay-at-home order, until the 31st. But it's, it's okay. It's all good. Uh, that means they're just being cautious to walk through this virus so we don't have a lot of people that get really, really sick. It's not fun from what I hear. Uh, it, it, it attacks the sleeves within your uh, blood vessels. So you have different sleeves through your blood vessels. And what it does is gets into the soft jelly part of the, I say jelly part, but it's probably a little bit different than that, of the, uh, the blood vessel. And then it works its way through the bacteria forms and it works its way through your blood system. This is why it's so yucky and you don't want to catch this. So well, our people, you know, uh, the city folks that are elected, they're doing the best they can. They're just human, just like us. We're doing this all play by play on a daily basis. So we need to just be patient. So today we have, uh, it's, I'm your host, Edna Collins. Uh, today's April, like I said, May 1st, and we have Diane. Pick, go ahead and say it. It's okay. It's hard. It's a doozy. Paconicum. Paconica with uh, big brothers and big sisters. And I wanted her to share. I want Diane to share. She missed March was a very busy month for her, and they were preparing for a huge benefit uh, was that going to be the 51st one? The no, that's actually our 33rd annual. It's supposed to be been our 33rd annual Bowl for Kids' Sake. Oh, okay. A bowl for Kids' Sake. Okay. And that was a fundraiser that helps get you through part of the year, right? Yes. Um, Bowl for Kids' Sake. We serve four counties, for those of you that's not aware. We serve Fresno, Madera, Kings, and Tulare. And we have five events um, that we go and to every county, whatever we raise stays there and help the children locally. And it was very heartbreaking to know that we had to cancel and um, we did lose quite a bit of money just doing that. Mm -hmm. Now, since, easy. since you've uh, uh, gone Central California wide through the PD, say for example, in Madera, how many children are you servicing there? Okay, so it depends on what program you're talking about. We have our Bigs and Blue program. I think that's the one you're referring to with PD. Uh, we have matches right now, 453 matches that's being matched with their big. So it's quite a bit. And then we have our high school bigs program where we contract with 16 school district. And that's where the high school students, it's mentoring the elementary kids. It's an after school program. We focus on mentoring. We focus on academic and social emotional. Oh my goodness. So there's a lot, it's a yeah. lot that we do right now. We have 1,168 matches throughout the, the four counties. Okay. So the programs are big with PD. Uh, Bigs and Blue. Mm -hmm. Bigs and Blue. And the other one was the high school mentoring. Yes, high, high school Bigs program. It's the after school program. And then we have our community base. That's where we're looking for an adult over the age of 18, someone with a caring heart to be matched with the child, to give them hope, to be there, to be a friend, and to really help them blossom and find their full potential. Oh, okay. So that would be any adult. And they do a background check to be sure they're Oh, yes. And our vetting process is very strict because child safety is our number one priority. So therefore, um, you have to make sure that you're doing it for the right reason. So our match support specialists, they're trained. Um, you would go and get fingerprinting, background check. We interview you. We find out why are you doing this. And we look into your home life. We get references. If you have a gun in the house, where do you lock it? And we have very... Um, I don't want to say strict rules and regulation, but it's kind of strict, meaning that you can't take the little, that's what we call the children, to your house until the parents, guardians, social worker all agree on it. And why are they going to your house? Because right now, we just have to make sure that our children are safe. Right. Oh, no. Uh, I'm 110%. I know who who's out there, you know, and you don't know. I mean, 
there are people, I think I said this before to someone, there are people in professional jobs that have issues. I mean, for example, I used to work at Superior Court in Orange County. And I was a clerk that always uh, set the arbitrations. We did it on rotation, but in that situation, I was doing that. And a fella, one of the attorneys came in. He was like, we were just locking our front door. So it was like two minutes and he banged on the door and he says, well, you're, you just locked it. I missed you by a minute. Please let me in. And so we let him in and we were going to, I was going to go ahead and calendar whatever he had, because usually they calendar for a month or two, depending mm -hmm. on what the case is going on. And the fella, he just got crazy all of a sudden. I said one word and then he started, he went off on me swearing and yelling and well, da 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 da, and I have the right, and well, so our marshal that's in the back, he's always walking up and down between the courtroom because we were in the presiding department, which is the head department that schedules all the court cases for the entire uh, courthouse, and we were working as the PIO department, which you now know as a informational officer. Back then, we didn't have that; we served two duties. And he just happened to hear him go off. And, and really, uh, he went over, we didn't even know. He went over and talked to the judge and the judge said, send him over to me, I'll take care of it. Okay. Uh, so when he went over to the judge, the judge found out that the guy was high on drugs. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, here he is a professional guy. He's got an, a, a law degree, it's got past the bar, everything going for him. And just that one incident cost him his license because the judge, he, he says, you don't come into my court and you don't deal with my staff in the manner that you have. If you had, it would have been normal circumstances, it, everything would have been fine, but you mm -hmm. elevated to a point that it was disrespectful to my staff. So that was the end of that man's career. So you can't, you have to be so very, very careful. People know how to mask themselves very well. So, yeah, go ahead. And I don't know if you're aware, but majority of the um, pedophile and perpetrator usually are very close and involved in, with children. They pry on that. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure we're very consistent. The questions that we ask, we, there's red flags or anything. When in doubt, we check it out. So it's a very thorough process, but the need is great. Um, Edna, I don't want to steer people away from becoming a big brother. No, of course not. Because we have on the waiting. There's a lot of kids that really are needing a sort of role model, someone just to love on them. So it's very heartbreaking when they call and say, did you find a big brother, big sister for me? And we haven't, because mm. the need is so great for that. We're in need of mentors. Yeah, and, and, and people, uh, I understand, and we need to find, and there are a lot of good people here in Fresno and Central California area. Uh, I'm Absolutely. A lot of good volunteers, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm just, you know, being careful is very, uh, I can understand that being your concern. I know you'd be brokenhearted if something were hap would happen. Um, now, let's go to the, the uh, talk about how, I know you have the support system when you have like the uh, PD group, I'm sure they're supportive. Mm -hmm. um, how are we gonna make up the difference on that benefit that you missed? Are we getting donations or? Yes, we, you know what? I don't know if you saw my Facebook um, live. I went, um, I did last week. It broke my heart. We serve so many families and a lot of them are in the rural era, you know, where it's the outskirt and it's so hard to know that they're struggling and they're hurting. So therefore we are asking for donation to support our family. We partner up with a lot of other companies that we have and they're helping us out. Um, so it's hard, but we are trying to fundraise. That's the only way we can thrive and survive. You know, we go through grant funding, foundation, our, like, like you mentioned, Bowl for Kids Sake was one of our fundraising idea, mm -hmm. but we're doing whatever we can. I'm gonna let you know that we had to lay off some staff members. Oh. I had to let go nine because we're partnered with 16 school district. Well, if the school is not open, I can't justify them being there. Right. right. So a lot of changes happen. It's, it's hard overall. And right now, 
everybody's being furloughed just to sustain ourselves. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I am very confident. I know that we have an amazing community and people has been stepping up because they know the work that we do right now. We're still sustaining it. We're sustaining our matches. We're doing a zoom meeting. My staff is meeting with bigs and little, and they're still communicating. They're talking. We call them match support specialists, but they're really our social worker. So we're communicating and reaching out to the family. Do you need anything? Do you need any resources? Mm -hmm. It broke my heart. There was, you know, families out there saying, we don't have food. We don't know where to go. We have grandparents that don't have transportation. They usually take the bus and they're, they don't want to take the bus or they can't. And um, they're afraid because they have underlying health condition. Right, right, right. A lot of that going on. Now on those outskirting uh, cities, now you're talking about Madeira is pretty populated now. Yeah. And yeah, you, we're talking about, um, well, some of them is like Cutler Rossi, uh, Riverdale, Danuba, you, um, Chowchilla, at Oakhurst. So there is, we cover a large demographic all the way, you know, like I mentioned, Tulare, Visalia, it, it, Kings County. It sounds to me, it might be, and I don't know, it's just in my brain, it sounds like you might do well with a, a little bus service. Is that something possible for you? Well, on, um, a lot of people staying at home, the shelter in place. So we identify, what happened is I've talked to my staff, we're reaching out to the family that we serve mm -hmm. and they're telling us, well, I need this or I need help, I need food. I prefer the way we did it, we, we created a list, we compile it and we di dissect the need of the family. There's a mother in Oakhurst that mentioned, I really need a, you know, a laptop or a tablet for my children so they could do their homework have three kids and I don't have it. The school didn't give it to them. So therefore she's asking for a tablet. So that's the need of this family. I have a mother that has a severely autistic five-year-old. He only eats certain baby, um, baby food, Gerber, and it's running out. There's none in that area because she lives in the mountain. So therefore, okay, that's her need. So we're dissecting every family's need. And what we're trying to do is, you know, time, energy, mileage. We're trying to see what's the local um, grocery store okay, this family, grandma is raising her three grandchildren. She doesn't have rides. She needs food to, to get her through the week. We'll order food and try to deliver it. So everything's very unique. We try to customize to the need of the family. Oh Having a bus service is kind of hard too because a lot of people don't want to get in the car. They don't want to be near other people. So yeah, it's, it's very, it's, we're in a very mm -hmm. challenging, unique situation right now. Well, how about a... a like uh, shared ride, shared rides too. I mean, I understand they can put their gloves and their mask on, but maybe they have another person in that area they could share rides with if they have to come into town. Kind of like a carpooling thing, you know? Maybe that's an idea. I don't know. That is an idea, but lately it's working that we're ordering food. Either they go pick it up or they um, we get it delivered. Oh my goodness. So that's good. So yeah. I notice. I mean, there's so many needs because most of the children are coming from single parent homes. Yes. Right? Our criteria is um, low income, free or reduced lunch, non-traditional family. So single mom, single dad, foster youth, or a lot of them's grandparents that took over and raising their grandchildren mm -hmm. and seen as high risk or having a parent that's incarcerated. So if you meet three of those four criteria, then we would service you in our program. Mm -hmm. We have to put those criteria in because we'll get thousands of children and the list will be so long. So we have to make sure that we serve the one that's most at need. Right, right. And and it's, and you have uh, age groups too, don't you? Mm -hmm. How do to you be, To be enrolled in our program, we're looking at ages six to 14. So if you're within that age group, um, you give us a call, we ask you some questions, and if you qualify, then we would go to your house, but now it's different. We'll Zoom the family, we'll talk to them, and we'll see what is their need. Let's say you have a granddaughter that you want in our program. Okay, she's 10 years old, you're raising her, the income's low, and so you qualify. So therefore, I'm going to say, Grandma, what would you like for your granddaughter? Well, you know what? She's really depressed, she's hurt, she's angry, she's being bullied. We put everything in assessment. And then we interview your granddaughter. We find out what her likes, her interests, and we match her with someone that's based on her compatibility. So it's like eHarmonyMatch.com. It's pretty neat that we try really hard to make sure they have the same common interests. Mm -hmm. That's that's interesting. That's a that's yeah. a project. 
<laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah. And I, I do want to express to people out there that the older they are, the harder to match them. So we had to do something that was hard for us, but we didn't want to hurt the kids anymore. We try to limit to age 12 because 13 and 14 year old, they're usually on the waiting list. A lot of people want to do like adoption. They want the, the little one, the cute one, you know, and the older they are, it's just harder to match them. And they wait and wait and it hurts them because we interview them and they would wonder, geez, no one want me. I'm a reject, you know? So we, we try to go younger, like 12 and under, but we will take 13 to 14 year old, depending on the circumstances and the area. We want to be realistic. We don't want to hurt these children feeling. We don't want them to have ex high expectation and get hurt again. Yeah. So we, we try. It's case yeah. by case. Yeah. And there's a sensitive age. I mean, oh, yes. 13, 14. You wouldn't think you think they're all grown up, but it's yeah. very sensitive. Sure. Age. You know? Sure. They're wanting to figure out uh, where am I going to fit in this world? I'm coming from this family and I don't have what Susie Q down the street has. And I don't know any of that, but I'm trying. And there's so many things that go, so many um, things that go into this dynamic. Uh, and you can't, it's hard to change the thinking. I mean, that's what you're having the matches for is to be able to coach them with a different, yeah different viewpoint other than what the household they're coming from uh that's great now i noticed that also um because of the the system that you have you get to meet a lot of the parents personally don't you oh yes they become a part of our family we get to know them because we interview like i said if you wanted your granddaughter to be in a program we sit with you we're like okay grandma what's going on and they usually open up to us and say you know what i'm going through hard times or they they will express what they're going through so we have we have to have a relationship in order for it to work we need to be partners with parents and guardian right. sorry i'm outside and there's the plane <laughs> can you hear it <laughs> yeah so it's loud there <laughs> they all go away but yes yeah, so we, we we get to know the family we get to do more than what the school is able to do. We're very intimate with the family and um, we were able to provide them more service because of that whole intimacy that we have with them, mm -hmm. the relationship. Most of the time when you have these matches, this is, you have your school time and these matches are during the off, after school hours, correct? Mm -hmm. It's kind of give us an idea of what a, a big, uh, would be going through they go to school kind of give us a rundown of their day okay just so that you guys don't get confused because we have three different program right um so the community base over the age of 18 with their caring heart we just want you to do things to take them to see new adventures outside beyond their neighborhood maybe it's gang infested and they've seen drugs and everything but you're a, a big sister that's going to take them out and show them river park or go to the library go feed the ducks it's so amazing when you open their eyes and they're like whoa i've never been here let them dream is what we're asking people so there's a story that i like to share just so people will understand how simple it could be there's a lot of volunteers that said well i don't know if i could be a mentor i don't know if i could be in charge of this child but really i remember when i first started as the program director in 2011 it was at a pump it up event and um, the little grew up and own it. So he wanted to give back to our agency. So we had a free event. I remember sitting down on the floor, crisscross applesauce. I told the kids, tell me, I was new to the job. I was the program director, I was new. Tell me what do you like about your bigs? Where have you been? I wanna know more from the ch child's perspective. Right. Everybody was telling me their stories. They were having fun. There was one boy in particular, beautiful brown eyes. He didn't wanna sit down because he was so excited. It looked like he had to go um, potty because he did the, you know, he was jumping up and down, crossing his leg. I said, okay. Um, he's like, is it my, I go, you need to use the restroom? He said, no, no, no. Is it my turn, Miss Diane? I wanna tell you where I've been. I said, okay, it's your turn. So I got excited. Uh -huh. and I'm Disneyland, the beach, something amazing, right? And he said, well, big brother, he took me to this big place and they sell everything, Miss Diane. They sell, they and they sell everything. And they, he called it a warehouse, but 
you know what the best part? I go, what? He gave, they gave me free food, free sample. Ooh. So when you think about it, what is a place that, you know, is big, sells everything, give you free sample? Do you know where it's at? Edna, do you know? Costco. It was Costco. Costco. So even the, the smallest, you know, the, the things we take for granted, these kids, they need that. They yearn for that. They, they want someone to pay attention to them. They need structure in their life. They need someone to say, oh, it's school. How are you doing? So I, I, I encourage people out there, if you know how to be a friend, you could be a big brother, big sister, as long as you're committed. These kids been through so much. So mm-hmm. I need someone to be committed at least a minimum of a year. But honestly, a lifetime of friendship is what we're looking for. Right, 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 right. No, I, I had my son go through a similar type of program in Southern California. And it's and they get to, to trust each other and they call mm-hmm. second opinion. Well, gee, what do you think of this? Or it's good. that's a good that's a good thing to have more than your parent to talk to talk to. Uh, because sometimes you find out things that you didn't know was going on. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it might steer them back to the right direction, which is a good thing. Now, it, that's now, uh, so they have scheduled appointments like one or two times a week or? You know what? We're trying to be flexible and on your time for community base. We have the lunch buddy. So you go once a week or once every other week and go eat lunch with the child at the school site. That's where Bigs and Blue usually do. But we have the community base where, hey, I need to go shopping and buy my mom something. Let's go on a treasure hunt. So they go to the store. So really, it's on your time. You work it out with the parent and said, I'm available on Friday night. Uh, Big Brothers gave us free tickets to the basketball game or football game. Let's go. So really, it's, it's flexible. People need to realize we don't put you on a schedule because life, we get busy, but we want structure. At least, you know, once a week or once every other week, you go spend time with your little. If you can't see them, you could call them up, FaceTime, how are you doing this week? I can't go out. You know, I'm busy with work or anything. But next week, let's go to the park. Let's go beat the ducks at Woolworth Park or something like that. Right, right. Okay. Just like your good uncle or cousin. Yep. Right. Okay. Yep. That's great. And then with the officers, do they have, do they take them on tours or what is, what goes on with them? What office? Oh, the MASH support specialist? The, mm-hmm. My staff? My staff? Are you talking about my staff? No, I was seeing the... Oh, the police officer. Oh, gotcha. Okay, same thing. It's the same concept. They're just bigs and blue. So they could be at a site base where it's lunchtime. You know, the police officer would go and they get matched. Same process, compatibility, the whole um, assessment, matching up with the little. They go have lunch with the child once a week. It's in like 35 minutes, 45 minutes, go talk to them, be there for them. Or they could be a hybrid where they could take the child out. It doesn't have to be a school setting. Oh, okay. So that's the Bigs and Blue program. That's nice. So they could take them to movies or the car race. Absolutely. We encourage that. Uh, Giving them life skills and exposing them to, to other things that they might not have. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is perfect for a single mom. I mean, oh yes oh. been a single mom those times i was out working i'm worried about oh my son got home early what's going on uh made sure that i had enough food and toys you know play pool they uh play a racquetball or something for them to play that they and eat that's the other thing they like to eat <laughs> <laughs> kids don't they all yeah so now um as you get to know each of these families, I'm sure you have a, a huge number of friends now. <laughs> oh, yeah. For me, I'm blessed with amazing staff. That's their job is to, um, my job is the one to bring in money and sustaining all four counties and offices um, and making sure payroll, everything, you know, is seamless. My staff is the one that's in the trenches you know, that's working with the children, that's matching them, helping the family, giving resources. They are the social worker behind it. Mm-hmm. So Okay. And um, now, hopefully you'll be able to bring your staff back soon. <laughs> yes. 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 Uh, everybody's having to make hard decisions right now to keep everything in check. But, I mean, they're off for right now. They get unemployment. That's a good thing, I would hope. Um But as far as the office is concerned, so you're there, let me ask a question. Would it be, um, 
helpful. You, you have people in need of certain items and food seems to be a big item. Could, if people have extra food or want to donate items, goods like that, can they drop them at your office? we're um, limited on hours so i try to make arrangement um i try to meet people at the office someone just donated diapers and wipes and everything for the mother that's eight months pregnant uh -huh. she's so scared she's asking for this because her hours were cut and she's afraid she's not going to be able to take home her baby from the hospital if she gave birth so yes i will meet make arrangement meet with people and then give it to the family but like i mentioned we try really hard some families just don't know the resources around. So they said, we're running out of food and we look at their area. Oh, this church is giving out food. So you should go on this date at this time mm -hmm. or the food bank. But the ones that we're really helping is the one that is hard to get those resources. They're not near that place. They don't have the transportation or the, you know, the means to get there. Right. So, yeah. So can you give a phone number or a contact uh, in case some people watch this and they want to help you out? Yes, um, I would highly encourage them to go on our website as well. We're always taking donation. If you want to sponsor a child or you know a person is what we're saying, it's $25. Hopefully that could give them what they need in regards to groceries and so forth. So if anybody want to donate, go to bigs.org, B-I-G-S.org or even give me a call, you know, that I'm taking all the calls right now because I have more flexibility to go to the office. It's 559-283-3842. Okay. So that's my cell phone number and I'm sure you could write it here somewhere so everybody could see. Right, right, yeah. No, I'll take it down and I'll put it on uh, for you. Uh, so uh, food items, it could be canned goods or even those, uh, Gift cards, that would gift be- Gift card is tremendous. It, it was um, something that we're, I wanted to tell you, the staff is saying, Diane, some of these kids don't have cable. They don't have a lot that's going on. Mm -hmm. Think about it. I want the adults to think about this. We're going through some turmoil. Our lives have changed. Many of us ourselves are going through some sadness, depression, anxiety, fear, because of the unknown, right? Can you imagine what the children are going through? Put yourself in a child's shoe. Maybe they live in a majority of our family. They're not doing well financially. Can you imagine what mom is going through? Maybe she's having a lot of stress and anger outbursts. A lot of the situation is not the best. So therefore, we're thinking of trying to buy board games for the kids to keep them occupied. Maybe coloring book, board games, something where they could play with their sibling mm -hmm. because we're, we're at home. If you don't have much, I mean, this can mean a world of a difference. Mm -hmm. So what I would like is if anybody's out there is listening, if you guys would like to, um, you know, donate and sponsor a child or anything, we could go and get them the board games, have Amazon deliver it to their house. So there's not so much, you know, um, driving back and forth because like I mentioned, I am nine of my staff is no longer with me. Mm -hmm. So our manpower is very, kind of tight we have to be very you know strategic in our time management right so we're i think um donation is the best deal but if anybody want to donate items and food definitely give me a call i will make a time where i'll be here from a certain time and people could put off at our fresno headquarters mm -hmm. okay that sounds great now also i noticed that uh from time to time you get to talking to the moms and they have other situations yeah that they kind of share with you now that you know them and they feel comfortable, kind of give us an idea of some of those issues that are coming up. I, I have a, a, a degree, a master's in counseling. So I'm used to um, doing a lot of counseling for parents and families and, you know, single mom and so forth, you name it, for children. And um, it's very heartbreaking. Sometimes um, the mother has a boyfriend and there's a lot of domestic violence in the family. There's a lot of outbursts and a lot of fear. And a lot of people would say, Diane, how do you do it? Because I share a lot on Facebook. 
how do you stay so happy? Why, you know, I can't do what you do? Because I do, I count my blessing. I keep my um, social media very positive. There's no need for negative. You don't want to spread that energy around. But I want people to realize that we're all human. We're going through this, you know, I'm not saying we're going through the same thing, but we're all going through something. Right. So for the mothers that I work with, some of them are in a relationship where they're being physically abused or they're feeling depressed because they don't know what to do. A lot of us are turned into educator where we have to teach our kids how to do their homework. And sometimes their homework is really hard. <laughs> Even me for having a master's, I look at my child's homework. I'm like, oh boy, do you want to take back my degree? Because I don't know how to do this. I forgot. It's been 20 something years, right? I... We're very hard on ourselves. And I want the ladies to know that you know, it's okay to cry. It's okay to not be okay. We, we have to accept that and not be so hard on ourselves, not to push ourselves to the, to the extreme and have this high expectation. Mm. I cry in the restroom. I, I cry in the shower. You know, I don't cry in front of my kids and my family because I don't want them to stress, but it's a heavy burden. I can't imagine each of us have our own burden to bear. And it's not easy and we shouldn't judge each other, but instead welcome one another and talk it out. And so I agree with you. That's the type of families that I do work and I hear a lot and it's very stressful and sad. Right. What do you think? I mean, would you, do you think it would be helpful if we had like uh, ladies could feel safe to, we have a discussion, like a Zoom meeting like this. I mean, I have the capability to do that and we can talk uh, Absolutely. Uh, and open up. I mean, I've gone through a lot. I don't share with a lot of people a lot of things because some of it is really rough to hear. Uh, and, and they would wonder, you know, how did you manage to stay alive? That's another story. Uh, but we having you and I have gone through certain things that we could share and make them feel better. Uh, you know, over life, uh, you put in the effort to make those changes and everyone can do it. It's some slow, some real quick, but all along the way you do just like the children. They need support system, an outlet, someone to go to, to, yeah chat with on something very simple you know um maybe it could be managing money because you have to buy a new pair of shoes or how do i make these adjustments and then it could be as violent as like you said uh, uh a boyfriend that is you thought on the face at the front end that it was going smoothly and it was okay but then once you get to know them after a year or so, it, it changes into something else. So people want to find a way to exit that situation or make it better. What do you think we could do? I think it's very, I think it's very, that's a great idea. I think it's very important that we need to support one another. We should, if, and if they're comfortable, ladies out there, if you're comfortable to have this dialogue, to let you know that you're not alone, I think it's very important spiritually to be heard and not to suppress that. I think that would be great. I'm open to it if anybody wants to talk. Yeah. So talk if anybody want to express what's going on, um, get any advice. I think it's important. Yeah. So uh, what do you say you and I could work on this? Um, we, we, what would you like to name it? We can have a, I mean, if it's just for the ladies, we could let them know, ladies, it's okay not to be okay. Real talk, you know, just something to say it's okay. If, so I, I would go with that route. Okay. So maybe um, we could start that next week. Do you have time? Sure. Yes, I'll make time. This is very important. If it's going to help anybody else, then let's make time. I could do next Wednesday. Okay. Um, and I know you mentioned maybe if someone's working or I don't know what's a good time, maybe everybody's home or maybe they're not. So if we want to be mindful, I would say in the evening so that people could join us. Perhaps we could do it Wednesday, next Wednesday around six o'clock. Yeah, that's, that sounds fine for me. And then uh, as we progress through the uh, talk sessions, I'm sure people will let us know. Maybe we could 
have to tweak the time a little or, you know, we're, yeah. we're workable. I'm flexible. Uh, but I think uh, really with this Me Too movement and all that's been going on, I mean, let's face it, in the last three years, we've been hit with a lot of changes. <laughs> it's been a... <laughs> been a heck of a ride, huh? <laughs> uh -huh. So, um, I think it's and and us ladies, you know, I hate to say it, fellas. We we, we love you, fellas, too, honestly. But <laughs> the men have been running the country, and everything is geared. The laws are geared towards men. The everything is geared towards the masculine aspect of everything, mm -hmm. how business is run. And I think this would be good this, so our dear governor could get an insight as to how California needs to change to incorporate how the ladies perceive things, how they should be in, to, to incorporate them as part of working America. What do you think? I'm game. Just let me know. <laughs> if you guys need that, um, if that time works, I'm there. If not, then we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. But I think we need to support each other. We're, we all need to be there and support each other and just love, love on each other and just be kind. And I think this is a great start. Yeah, it's a good start. And you never know, some of the other ladies might join us in the talk. I mean, and which would be good. I mean, Lisa, she has her set of skills that she deals mm -hmm. with the children which Absolutely. is very, very valuable. And I know some other ladies, I mean, some in the military and, and they've gone through things and they might be able to share. So I don't know how we can get the word out, maybe a Facebook uh, uh, ad. Uh, and that's about all I can think of and we can share that. And then uh, your, the ladies, the children's moms, I don't know how you would uh, disseminate the information to get them to join. Um, we could let my staff know and let them know they could join that way as well. Okay. But yeah, I think word of mouth is very powerful in social media, just sharing on our platform, letting people know it's a safe place. Anybody want to come, they could come talk about it. Mm -hmm. I don't think it should be recorded or anything, just to have that dialogue conversation. Right, okay. And then we could also... Uh, you know, ladies' issues start very young. You know, we have 13, 14 year old young ladies that are, well, way more mature than I was when I was 14. <laughs> so I know. I know. Maybe we could bring them in. I mean, your daughter's very cute. And she's a very smart girl, and she might be able to, to help too with the talk. Whatever you like, let's do it. Let's just go ahead and throw it out there and see who's interested. Whether it's 10 ladies or 100 ladies, at least we're helping and empowering one another. And that's so key. It's a support system of sorts. And from there, you never know what might come up. <laughs> one step at a time. That's all we can do. But um, this is very, very good now, everyone. Again, share your phone number and your website information. Okay. You want me to give it again? Mm-hmm. Okay, it's www.bigs.org. So that's our website, bigs.org. And then my cell phone number is 559-283-3842. Okay. Now everyone, anyone out there that could help with food, uh, donations of food, uh, uh, food cards, the... Uh, so they can go to Walmart or whatever to go buy whatever they need or uh, goods, like you said, wipes, diapers, bottles. Do you need bottles sometimes? Yeah, yeah. we need quite a bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you need everything that a child would, uh, just think if you're a grandparent, you know what you need. <laughs> For That's child, right. You know, they need like, in May, it's Mother's Day, so they may want to be uh, worried about uh, getting mom a little box of candy or something, you know, things like that. Just, it doesn't take much, really. It's just remembering they're there. Just being acknowledged is the first thing, <laughs> really. So um, contact Diane 
and I'm sure that there'll be some process that we come across a certain time that she can take in donations. And then if you have money, how many children are you supporting? A thousand? A thousand one sixty-eight. Okay. And that's their families and their siblings. So thousands and thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll make that about three thousand. <laughs> Give or take. Yeah. yeah. So um any of you that uh, uh, have time to give, to be matched up, this is a great opportunity. Um, great children, uh, people need people. That's all there is to it, no matter what. You and it'll be done virtually for the time being. So if you wanna be a, a mentor, you get through the process interview, we match up with the child. You guys will be doing a meeting like this with my staff being there. You just ask, hey, how are you doing, buddy? Oh, you're sad, what's wrong? Like you just have that relationship mm -hmm. with one another. Mm -hmm. oh, virtually done online. And maybe we can get the mafia uh, dolls in here too. So get them going. Any, yeah. well, I hope this is helpful. Uh, we'll have our first, what, what's the title again? I would say ladies, it's okay not to be okay. Let's have a real talk, yeah. Okay, so. let's have a real talk, six o'clock yeah. Wednesday evening. And we won't, we'll just have our group talk. I can get up to a hundred people into this. Uh, and I don't know, um, I guess we'll make, I'll make up a little flyer and put it on Facebook and, and then we can just mill it through organically. And I'm sure that once we get going, people will know where to find us. <laughs> yeah, and we invite everybody. You don't have to be an expert. Maybe you just want to hear and listen to what other people have to say. Maybe you're going through some things, maybe you're not, but you never know. Just come and join us. You never know what you're going to get out of it. Friendship. Yeah, you know. six bring your celery and your carrots like I should be eating. <laughs> I know. Right, you're okay. And sit down and we'll just, just sit there and listen. I mean, you learn so much just listening. You're not alone. Really, you aren't. I mean, many of us have gone through so much in uh, 65 years. Yeah. <laughs> <A lot. laughs> and I'm sure yourself, you've gone through a lot as well. So um, we look forward to seeing people or talking to people six o'clock on Wednesday. And I appreciate your time, Diana. And, and I'm sure that there'll be some people reaching out to you. That, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what do you typically, if, if you don't mind sharing on your benefit, like that bowl that you were supposed to have in March, how much money do you typically raise? For that one, 100000 That's quite a bit. Uh, yeah, a little over 100000 So it was tough. Yeah. That but is everybody's hurting, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but, uh, you know, like I said to somebody, in, sometimes just a dollar, one dollar at a time, it adds up to $10 in no time, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. So it's going to be um, next Wednesday, the 6th, so people are aware. So May 6th at 6 o'clock. Right. And it could change depending on what people tell you, but that's what we're looking at. Yeah, okay. okay. And then we'll have this girl talk. We'll have, it's okay to be not okay. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. Okay. Other than that, is there anything else? I appreciate your time. Thank you so very much. No, thank you. You're doing good, good stuff out there. And uh, give your, your children, your little daughter. She's so cute. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Um, so you take care and we'll see you on Wednesday. Thank okay. For coming in and watching Yo Soy Neighborhoods Fresno. We have more good things coming up starting next Wednesday. <laughs> Bye-bye.